welcome back to another video. I got my cousin Joe Robinson with me. He's been on Escaping Polygamy. <laughs> and he's actually got a huge announcement before we get into it. So, we've got a big event going on. That's right, everyone. I hope you all join me on June 8th. June 8th, we are having the Magic Music Show in Salt Lake City at the Depot. There are going to be many performers. A few of them is going to be the Domingo Jazz Band, uh, Nathan Collins, David Johnson, me, myself, <laughs> and this Macy Kate. Macy Kate, by the way, is a person that my little brother has showed me and was like, wow, look at this singer. She does so good. This was nine nice. years ago. So like now that I get to like perform with her and like have this experience, Ooh. me and my little brother are like blown, mind blown. Mm. You know so this I mean? is like a huge fan of you and your little brothers, right? And she's going <laughs> to exactly. be at the event performing. So exactly. That's so exciting. Heck yep. yeah. So we really hope yeah. to see all of you guys. It would mean the world to me if you just click the description. Go down in the description and click the link to go buy a ticket. You would build. There's different levels. You'd be able to meet me. Also, Eskel, are you going to have a booth where you can sell your... I, I'm going to be there and I'm going to help my sister set up a booth because mm -hmm. I'm all out of candles right now and I don't have time to make any <laughs> before then. But Amanda, she will be having like her cups and some of her merchandise there. So exactly. uh, I'm planning to help her, up, help her set that up. And I'm going to be there. Amanda's going to be there. Where It's going to be a really great get-together. So anyone, even if you're not close to Salt Lake City, this is worth flying in for, you guys. So the very first link I'll put in this description video is going to be for the tickets for that event. And then I'll also have links to Mace's YouTube channel because she's huge on YouTube, very popular. And then I'll also have um, Joe Robinson's YouTube on there as well. You, you can check out his stuff. He's been a little less active on it, but he's planning on posting some more stuff here soon. And I'm sure you're going to post because I'm planning on helping you film some stuff at this event and we'll probably yeah. make some YouTube videos Abs for your channel from that, right? Absolutely. We'll be posting yeah. stuff about it. Um, but to get nice. the full experience, you'll have to be there. But yes, yeah, so this is going to be an opportunity to meet me, meet Eskel, meet a lot Ooh, of the people yeah. and also like get like products signed. If you are like, hey, I, can you sign this for us? Like pictures, whatever. You Heck know, yeah. going to be an opportunity for you. Oh, that's going to be so fun. I've been wanting to meet ups. <laughs> And Amanda and I have talked many times about doing like a meet and greet for all of our fans online. This is basically going to be one of those. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a huge opportunity and I'm just excited to meet more people. Well, hope to see you guys there. So for this video though, since I got Joe with me, we're going to watch my recap of his episode. If you've been watching my channel, I've watched pretty much all of the Escaping Polygamy episodes and I talk a little bit about them. My big, huge goal of mine is to be able to talk about those escapes with the people that were actually in the escapes. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've been able to do that with my sister, Amanda, and now I'm going to do it with Joe, and I'm hoping to reach out to more people and do this very same thing. So we're just going to get right into it and start watching this video. We'll talk a little bit about it. So Thanks, how guys. long has it been since your escape? Oh, wow. Nine years. <laughs> so this is the crazy thing. And also, Nine this years. kind of ties everything back because this Thank event, you. like magic is the reason I pretty much left the order. Like I started Whoa, questioning everything. Heck yeah. You know what I mean? So like, and so mm -hmm. this kind of brings everything back. It's something I'm super passionate about, but yeah. That's so so cool. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, nice. Nine years. Was nine a long time. years of being out of the cult. And so and we're also going to be talking a lot about how different our views are. Cause when you're in mm -hmm. the cult, we all have a very cult like mindset. True. And now with nine years of a new life experience, mm -hmm. we see things very differently. So very I'm hoping true. to pick Joe's brain a little bit and see how different his thoughts were in this episode versus now. So we're going to dive into it and see how it goes. So let's Thank do you. it. Heck yeah. Okay. So I know I'm going to be John Joseph Robinson. Um, my parents are John Daniel Kingston and Patricia Robinson. My mom only had 13 kids. Okay, that's already the first thing I want to ask. So in it, in his episode, the first thing he says is my mom only had 13 kids. Did you feel like that was a little bit back then? Or was you just, did that just, was that, how, why did you say that basically? Well, there's so many people that have like 15, 18, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And it's like. Only thirteen kids, guys. 13. <laughs> it's only thirteen kids now. Now, like uh, now that I've left, this was this was filmed nine months after I left. Uh huh. And so, Dang. at that time, I saw things a little differently. Thirteen wasn't that much, 
Now it's a lot. Yeah, so. that is so, so many. A but bit it makes me think of back when I was in the cult. I remember it was like a competition to see oh, who can yeah. have the most. Mm-hmm. So I could imagine some cult kid being like, "Oh, only thirteen. We're not even competing <laughs> with the people with sixteen or eighteen kids." Exactly. So it's not that. Many. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> That's so funny though. <laughs> oh my gosh. So for the nice. very next episode in the oh, Escaping really Crime quiet. series is actually my mom's episode. So what's funny about this is I was filming this one in an Airbnb before I moved here. Uh-huh. And the people right next to the Ruben Ryan, it was like a couple. And they were arguing and fighting. So I was trying so hard to be quiet. Oh. <laughs> this review. That's why it's a little little bit hard to hear it. But setting because once again, there's another incest marriage taking place in the order. It's also very interesting to see the videos and to kind of like sneak peek into what her wedding was like. Because... It just looks just like all the other order weddings, right? Went right back to her and own little life. To me, yeah. what's very strange about that is that she just barely left and essentially ran away. Not not just you know she secret. ran away to Seattle, right? Like, ran I away didn't know night, that. Yeah, she lived in Seattle while she was, was public gone. about it. Like, oh, essentially cool. everybody mm-hmm. knew oh, okay. that she was trying to leave. But as soon as she goes back, it's like everything's back to normal, and they just she goes and gets married and. And everything seems to be fine. I don't know if she's like... Ah. Okay, let's talk about that. So it's like... So she leaves because they won't let her marry who she wants to. Then, mm-hmm. I, from what I understand, the man she wanted to marry reaches out to her and right. convinces her, we can get married, so come back, right? right. So she yeah. goes back and gets married. And then she even does a father-daughter dance with your dad. Right. Like, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Everything just goes right back to normal, even though she left. And I feel like... At least for me, I always felt like that once you made it publicly known, you don't believe in right. the order, you can't just go back to normal right. unless you're like, I guess, faking it or something. I don't know. Yeah. It so really what they make you do if you go back in that scenario, my dad will have a meeting with you and say, you need to apologize to everyone that you pretty much because you're, you're publicly, you mm-hmm. know, dissing the order you're publicly saying you oh don't gosh. agree with the order in this we're gonna see you, know? you have the meeting with them and uh-huh. i really want you to dive deep into what that meeting was about yeah but it's also crazy that for you you that you were asked to pay money i guarantee yeah. you they didn't ask her to pay money to go back right. you know it's like it's so much easier for the girls to go yeah. back it's crazy she for sure had to make like a she probably had to go up in church i wouldn't be surprised go like up in apologize church and apologize and stuff. And like say, their repentance and uh-huh. stuff yeah and be like I realize that the order is the place to be and, you know, this Mm -hmm. is what I did and this is what I've learned and Mm -hmm. pretty much. That's pretty much what you have to do. And so you do have to, so if you publicly disown the order, you have to publicly say, I changed my mind. Yeah. (laughs) And it's almost like they even, I always call it doubling down because you have to try and convince them that you're even more like confirmed to the order or committed to the order. Otherwise, they just don't be a part of them. Yep. You know? Exactly. So. so it sucks even more. If you thought your life sucked, <laughs> if you thought your life sucked when you were in the order, you go back and it sucks more. <laughs> you got to double oh, down. Yeah. So crazy, man. But people do it. In the order. And Joe is one of her half siblings, but one of 130 siblings. 130. Oh, let's talk oh, about over that. that. So you in this episode, they're saying that you had 130 siblings, but uh-huh. you're confident there's more than that I, now. I think there's probably my dad probably has around 150, 160 Whoa. is what I'm thinking. It could be more. Like it's for sure not less than 150. Okay, so for yeah, sure 150, 150, potentially even a lot more. Yeah. Wow, that yeah. is so crazy. So, um, in this, I thought it was interesting when Jessica says, "My brother, my half brother Joe is out, but I haven't seen him, even though he's been out for like three months or so." Yeah. What was that like having a half sibling out? Because to me, I'm like yeah. the moment I know someone on the outside, I go and meet up with them, get advice from them. Yeah. But for you guys, there's so many siblings, so there's still kind of right. a distance, right? Yeah, exactly. What was that like? So luckily for me, there was my older sister who left before me. Mm, and, and your direct sister. Direct right sister, okay. yeah. So pretty much the day I left, my dad's like, hey, get out of here, you know, like pack your bags, get lost. <laughs> 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 and so oh, the next day, went to my sister's house and I was okay. like, can I live here? And huh. I was still in school. I was still had like 
Well, in college, right? In college, yeah. Uh-huh. And so I had... How young were you when you got into college? Because I, I know was... they try to push you in really quick, right? Yeah, I was 16, so... Wow, yeah. He was one of the young ones <laughs> to get 16. into college. Oh, my goodness. So, because you probably... What, did you graduate mm-hmm. high school at like 15 then? Well, yeah. we say graduate high school, but they do this online curriculum mm-hmm. that isn't real high school. You can, you can literally get through it as fast as you want, mm-hmm. and it's basically getting your GED because you just passed yeah, the test. That's true. So, yeah. That's true. It's mm-hmm. very, very true. But yeah, I went, I guess I graduated, graduated, but uh, when I was 16 and then went to college when I was 16. But yeah, I uh, finished up the semester and I was done with at the Salt Lake Community College and then I went to the U right after. So, okay. Yeah. And so you were going, transferring from the community college to the University of Utah mm-hmm. while this whole getting kicked out thing was happening and all that? Uh, like, well, actually, yeah. Like I remember my graduation at Salt Lake Community College was like a week or two after. Oh, wow. And so I remember thinking like going through graduation, walking down the aisle. The leader of the order, Paul, didn't know that I left already. Like he Wait, was, he was there? He was there. What the? He, okay. did, he was at the graduation. I took a picture with the, everyone. You know, just like, <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> interesting. Some people just okay. didn't know that I wasn't part of it anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah, there is a little bit of a lag in information oftentimes. Yeah, exactly. But my dad uh-huh. knew. Uh-huh. And, you know, once he realized that I was taking pictures with everyone, he's just like, by the way, he's, this guy's not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. <laughs> I just remember being like all sad and like, dang it. That's something that's extra <laughs> interesting though, because I know a lot of people where their kids will like run away, but the families will keep it a secret as yeah. long as possible because they if they back. can convince them to come back, uh-huh. they'll just tell everyone in the order, oh, they never left. Like nothing yep. ever happened. They'll try to hide it. Yep. And I know of people that have been able to keep it a secret for up to an entire year. <laughs> they really do. And they, they do whatever they can to yep. keep that a secret. Exactly. But your dad's so different. Your dad, it's weird because yeah. like the moment he knows you're out, he's like, banish him. You know, like he's <laughs> yeah. so harsh yeah. on his own kids. Yeah. It's crazy. It's true. Man, it's that true. is so wild though. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, yeah, and then Man. I think Paul figured out at that day that I wasn't in the order. Oh, okay. like he's like talking to me all nice, you know, like obviously. Wow. And then like he, my dad tells him, and he, <laughs> you know, know what's funny changes. about that though, I, I, I would never let that get to you too much though, because I am public <laughs> online, always being like the order screwed people over. I, I try to think that I'm not super biased, but I have said some harsh things about the order because I think they deserve that and I think they are harsh to people. But I legit have walked up to order members and because we all look like cousins and siblings, they mm. literally have thought that I was just other people in the order and it's so hard yeah. to keep track of everyone that many <laughs> people will just be like, oh, hello brother, whatever, so-and-so, you know? And yeah. they'll just think that I'm someone in there. They won't know and a lot of the times they're too afraid for any confrontation yeah. that they'll just be like oh hey you must be this person you know mm-hmm. so it's super funny how they be super picky about like if you're in or not but then a lot of the times they won't even know they can't keep mm-hmm. track of it all so exactly. it's like if you just play the cards right nobody will even know or they just won't know what to do like if you i guess it does depend on the type of face you have maybe mm-hmm. but i would not be surprised if we even like went to church and we got away with it you know really <laughs> they would, but i mean it's hard it's, to know it's for so sure hard to but know. It's, I think it would be harder for me because I'm always posted on YouTube, uh-huh. but like for you, you really don't think they would mix you up I, with your brothers? No, I think they'll know. They would know for sure? My, da- okay. my dad will get word and I think they'll know, but. Okay. Interesting. I remember huh. I went to summer school that last time and there were some order kids in the class. Okay. And they were like, I was like studying with them, you know, good friends. Mm-hmm. They figured out halfway in that I wasn't even part of the order. <laughs> <laughs> and did they act way different then? They were just like, we can't hang out with you. We, we realize that you're not part of the order. And I was like, I know. I understand. <laughs> I, understand. <laughs> I was just like, I understand. Oh, I was just, like, it, I get hurt, but I was That's just like. That's crazy though, because for those few months, you were the same person being yeah. the same way, but just because of your status, they're yeah. going to treat you way differently. Oh, yeah. That's yep. so, wild. so I remember that. That was, that was the weird part is like when everyone doesn't know and yet mm-hmm. you still like kind of talking to them and it's like they're like yeah. <laughs> they find out and they're like, You're, you can't be over here. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's wild. This part is to watch him describe what his mom is going through and through his own eyes seeing what is happening and him trying desperately to do anything that he can to help to try and make it stop. And seeing that him, even as a young boy, understanding and seeing different options and different ways that might be able to help her, but they won't even let him try to help. 
they won't even listen to any other advice other than these leaders that aren't letting her get the proper help that she needs. Let's see. Isn't it kind of interesting how a lot of guys have like the type of bond we have with our mothers mm -hmm. oftentimes because it's like there's not much there with the fathers, right. but the moms are there actually. And right. So it's weird to say it, but like we basically are all bound to become mama's boys mm -hmm. <laughs> in some way or form. So I imagine that this was this was extra hard because right. they were really hard on you and, and your mom especially. Mm -hmm. They were really hard on her. And you personally got to experience her trying so hard to make things work, even mm -hmm. though it was very difficult in the group. I think that was probably the hardest part. But like any relationship that did exist with me and my dad was through my mom. Mm -hmm. Like my mom saying like, oh, this is a good guy. That's kind of the relationship that I had. Like, there was no, like, oh. actual relationship with my dad. It was, oh, this person that I respect likes him, so therefore I like him. And that's pretty much all it was. Interesting. But, so, yeah, my relationship with my dad was, was really, like, just like that. It didn't actually feel like a dad. So, it made mm -hmm. it easier to leave him, like, behind, like, okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, but did that ever yeah. change? Because, like, you're saying that because off of your mother's word, you trusted that your dad was a good person. But mm -hmm. so was that strange to see your dad's true colors and then be like, damn, my mom was wrong, <laughs> kind of, you know? Or, like, did I mean, that ever, like, bother you? Or was it just, did you just separate that completely? I separated it completely because my mom mm -hmm. uh, was young. She was 16, I believe, when she got married. And she... Do you feel like she truly did view daniel as like this great good person or was she what do you how do you think she actually viewed the relationship it's so hard to say because she never suggested to me that she didn't like him mm -hmm. she never suggested to me that you know that she does not doesn't like the order she always acted like she did and so huh. um that's what i saw with her um but as far as like the way they handled the whole situation is a different story like the way my dad handled it the way the order handled it, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's partly the reason why, like, I couldn't go back. Even when I was, like, super lonely, I wanted to actually go back. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I was this close to, want to like, going back, but I couldn't forgive what has happened. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I'm like, I can't so forgive did this. The, so, did the... Because a lot of people that try to go back, they don't even get asked to pay money. But they asked you to pay money. Did that change <laughs> your view, or was you still willing to pay that to potentially go back? The money had nothing to do with anything. It was pretty much like to be in the order. I had to pretty much cut my arms and my legs, my everything. Like it, it was pretty much like it felt like I had to do ev like the money was nothing. Okay. Money was not a factor. It was all the other obligations they were trying yeah, to make you do. That exactly. Okay. It felt like to go back to the order. I have to give up everything that I am and everything wow. that I want to be. I mean, my dad was like. You have to like align your thoughts with mine. You have to align everything with mine. It's oh like, my goodness. and I was Dang. just like, I have to do pretty much everything that I'm going to ever be has to be for the order and nothing else. And so I was like, that's so not isn't possible. that, did you, did you get to get to question them on it and be like the fact that just you were in the order and it's true when just being an order member, you're obligated to give your all to the, to the Lord, mm -hmm. to the kingdom of God. So technically you're supposed to be doing that from the beginning. Right. But then the fact that just because you gave a little bit of insight that you consider it being not God's place and, mm -hmm. and that you might consider leaving or whatever, then they're like, they're doubling down on you mm -hmm. and, and making it like, not just that you have to contribute everything to the Lord, but now you have to do that. Like you don't just get to choose to be a good person or not, but if you want to have any chance of being in the kingdom of God, you have to do all of mm -hmm. these things that you already were supposedly supposed to be as a member, just right. in general. So did you ever get to ask him like, why is it so much more strict now when it's already not just 10%, when you're in the order, you give a hundred percent of your money to mm -hmm. the order. So it's like, it's weird for them to be like even more now you know it's like when you're giving your all so did you ever get to ask him about that or like does he just <laughs> totally ignore all of that well i never really tried to argue with him to be honest like mm -hmm. it, me my conversations with my dad was to say as many things as i could to like make him think i'm on his, his side to just get out of there oh okay. <laughs> so I, there's no point in arguing with him mm -hmm. you cannot win he will argue with you for like 10 hours if he had the chance. <laughs> he Dang. literally told me, he's just like, you don't want to do, go to Washakie and like work on the farm. I will grab your hands and make you work. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I will follow you around all week. Oh my god! You will go to Washington. That makes me think of my dad would literally say, "I will drag you to heaven if that's yeah, what I have to do." Exactly. It's like, really, you're gonna force me to be a good person. So uh-huh. even if I'm a Satanist in my head, you're gonna make me go to heaven. Like, yeah. what are they thinking? That's so, so weird. So it's like when you tell me you're gonna grab my hands and force me to think like you and like, like. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to argue with you. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? What in the I'm just going to be like. Man. <laughs> What's so wild about that is how does he not see how crazy he is? You I know? Don't know. Some I of the no things idea. they're saying. That's, I, like, he would be giving talks, like family meetings, right? And saying, I seen Jesus. I did this and saw this. And like, everyone's oh. mouth is like, really? And I'm like over there like, hey, dude. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't see nobody. You saw nobody. <laughs> But everyone else in the room is like, I can't believe he has this much power. And oh, I'm like, man. I can't believe you guys believe this. Dang. What's going on? You know, like mm-hmm. when I was getting close to like leaving and I started to realize, like I started to see through all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't really argue with someone that says they're seeing, seeing this stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so they're talking to Jesus. They're doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't really argue with them. Like you just talk to Jesus. Okay. You're perfect. You're yeah. right. Like, what are you supposed to say to that? It's like, they're not going to believe you. But. And they already have this whole fantasy of them having meetings with Jesus all the time. Yeah, I can't forgive. You know what I mean? Like, when I say, mm-hmm. like, I can't forgive them for what how things were handled, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, this was not handled right. I can't get, move past this. Just seeing them, like, seeing my dad and seeing, like, all this makes me think of it even more. So, like, switch lives, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. how can try to help. Yeah. But that's kind of a bigger part where I was like, it's not really an option to go back. Like, no matter how sad I am out here or how lonely I get, like that, like some family members disown me or won't talk to me. Like, it didn't matter because it's like all this other stuff. So how old were you when this was happening? Do you know? So I was 19 when my mom passed and I was 20 when I, my dad told me to find somewhere else. But that's what's so crazy about it. You were only 19 years old and you, mm-hmm. through your own resources of research, you were able to realize that they were not addressing your mom's need. And it's like they weren't even trying. They weren't mm-hmm. putting in that effort to realize that there were other options that could have helped, you know? The difficult that's part crazy. about it is my mom said some of the symptoms that she was having. But my mom said that she was like on the road with Daniel, right? On the road with the order and on the road with their way of doing things. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't really, like, tell her, hey, you need to go to the doctor. You need to do this because she's kind of she following their system. She doesn't want to go against what they say, huh? Yep. So, it's like, mm-hmm. that's what I was struggling with. And so, like, she told said symptoms. I remember Googling it and it says, go to the doctor. And I'm like, oh, crap. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I can't tell her that. Did she ever go to the doctor at all? Um, I think she got tested and they like had a plan, but she was like, she never stuck with the plan. Yeah. She's Uh like, we got a different way to solve this. Well, actually my Uh dad said, Hey, we have a different way to solve this. And my mom just kind of nod her head. Do you ever wonder, like, did Daniel give any explanation as to why they don't, didn't want to listen to the doctor? Or is it just because they normally don't? So his general idea is just to not. They like ever, all my siblings, as far as I could tell, thought she was going to live. I think I was the huh. only one that thought she wasn't going to live. Whoa. That's literally what it felt like. I was just like, you guys are full of it. Like, Dang. I'm like, what are you talking about? But, wow. and then my mom, I'm not sure what she thought, but she acted like she was going to live. And my dad said, oh, that we've done with this. We we know how to fix this. We got the Lord on our side. We have all this stuff. Mm-hmm. They came and gave my mom a blessing. Like, I, th- I remember Paul being there, putting the hands on the head and mm-hmm. giving a blessing. I'm over there like, you guys are so dumb. Like, <laughs> like I'm over there like... And everyone's like thinking it's so special that there's a, this blessing. And I'm over mm-hmm. there thinking, I don't know what to do because I can't go against my mom. And mm-hmm. my mom's following along with this. And I know it's not going to work. And I know it's like, it was just a... That would be so hard to see. I don't know how it doesn't feel. And watch these people die. And take no responsibility for it. And not even care. Yeah, that part's got to be hard then, right? Because after... After they told you confidently that Christ mm-hmm. is on their side, that she's going to live, mm-hmm. and then she doesn't, was there any type of, like, what I've seen, it didn't look like they really cared much or, like, were apologetic about it or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just very harsh, right? Yeah, there, there was no apology. That I, Actually, in fact, it was probably the opposite of that. It was a slap mm-hmm. in the face. It was like, my mom filled out an insurance policy, and I didn't really talk about this. Oh, life insurance? I, yeah. Oh, whoa. I didn't fill out, <gasps> I didn't talk oh about goodness. this, like, publicly at that all. That changes things. But my mom filled out a life insurance policy. She didn't fill it out correctly. 
and so she it was considered fraud, right? Whoa. So nothing was paid out on it, but it was a million dollar mm-hmm. policy, and my mom listed her kids as a beneficiary, oh. and we were told, hey, you have to when this money comes out and it's paid. You have to pay it, give it to the order, give it to basically deposit it in my dad's bank account. And if you don't, your your mom won't go to heaven. Like what? It was like, yeah, I'm dead serious. It seems crazy. Oh my like it's gosh. like, gosh. And like, who took Daniel was Daniel saying, was this, saying to you? this? Daniel, everyone was saying it. Like all, all like everyone's just saying, this is what you need Wait, to so, do. Wait, so so they're planning for this money that's not even going to come because it was considered fraud. Then mm-hmm. interesting. But even if it did come through, they would have demanded you give it all to Daniel. Then right. Yep. Wow. Exactly. Otherwise, and then I remember. So so does that ever scare you that maybe they were motivated by that payout to not take care of her? Kinda. I think my dad knew, like the last day that she was going to be there. Because he stayed home from church that day with her. Oh, wow. And so, so I have a feeling. he knew something was up. I have a feeling my mom somehow knew and told him that this was my last day. My mom and my dad stayed home. The kids, we all said goodbye. We all went to church. And then during lunch. Yeah, so I have a feeling that my dad knew. But yeah, and then, so I remember my dad's first wife coming up to us and being like, I had a dream that your mom's waiting at the gates of heaven. She's going to be happy once she, once she can get into heaven as soon as you guys pay. It. As what? Soon as you guys pay the so one of the other that, wives literally was telling that to you. As, as soon well. as you, yeah, as soon as you guys pay oh the God. like the insurance comes through and you guys pay it up. So like I don't know how you can forgive someone. Like they're telling you this stuff and you're like, which is also weird because everything's supposed to be centered on Christ and keeping peace and making the right choices, but they're literally using manipulation to make sure you give them money. So yeah. it's like their focus is on the money. And the the part that I disagreed with on on this whole part is that's not what my mom wanted. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. I really don't care. Like if my mom wants it to be one way then I, then I support that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's all that that I thought about, but clearly she did not. And, and there was different things that she wanted to go to. Like, like obviously there was zero inheritance. She wanted different things to go to her kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And so none of that was respected. So I was just like, okay, this is impossible to forgive on Mm -hmm. that. And you experienced it firsthand because there was a few sentimental items you really wanted and they were, they mm-hmm. made you pay for them, right? Right. right. If you want so anything, harsh. like even something that's not even worth, like you can't, no one else would even want, you have to pay for it. And Dang. I'm like, okay, this is literally like the definition of like taking oh. advantage of someone. And like, 100%. it's evil. Like, that's not fair. Like, mm-hmm. and you're using a very stressful, emotional moment mm-hmm. to gain monetarily from mm-hmm. that. It's so sad. From people that you claim that you like and you love. It's like... And that's what's the craziest. Mm -hmm. These are order members using these manipulative tactics to gain and and make money off of you, which is your own cousins, your own Mm -hmm. father. It's Mm -hmm. like, what in the hell? What are they thinking? I can't say that enough, man. I feel like that's... People always are like, why you got to keep on talking about the order and bring up things and and talk bad about us. It's like, because you guys have done, and I keep, I know it's generalized. It's not every person in the order, but the leaders and the ones that get this control are doing some horrible things. So Mm. that's why we're pointing out these harsh things because they're happening. If you as one individual is just going to stay there and be like, oh, but I'm being good. It's like, but you're a part of this bigger picture. So you are supporting that and essentially helping that to be able to happen. So you're still a part of it in one way or another. So mm-hmm. it's so crazy. She just said that it's not true, that, she, that she's not throwing up blood and she's getting better. Mm-hmm. But you personally saw her having all these issues, huh? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you were home way more than Daniel was, right? right. So. Yeah. And it's like, if I wanted my mom to do something, go to the doctor or something, it has to be Daniel saying it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I'm not going to go up to my mom. and Like, I respect my mom. I'm going to say, okay, what do you want? And just support mm-hmm. whatever she says. Mm-hmm. Did you but, ever feel like, though, she didn't have an opinion? She would always just right. be like, whatever Daniel says. Kinda? Exactly. So, like, okay. it's like, if I want to, like, convince my mom of something, you have to go to Daniel. She will just say, whatever Daniel thinks. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. so oh, I'll go man. ask Daniel. That's so true. She was lying on the couch and... We were getting um, lunch ready, and then at like about two, two fifteen, then she stopped. She stopped breathing. I never got to confirm this, but did you get to go to your mom's funeral? Did I did. So, it? so I was still in the order. Oh, okay. Time. Yeah. I see. So when the okay. funeral happened, I was still in the order. 
But, okay. um, and e- so even as an order member, they didn't give you any leniency on having things. They still made you pay for. Oh, those yeah. Things. No, they did. Yeah. I was still right. in the order. Like mm-hmm. they were telling me this as an order person. Wow. And so, and That's I was crazy. like, this is funeral. I wanted to talk and talk about the situation in public. Mm-hmm. So Daniel made it sure that I wouldn't get to go up in front of anyone, go on the mic Whoa. at my mom's funeral. And I was still in the order. And then they, Daniel made me take a picture with him. And so, hmm. like, I just got, I just went like this because I'm like, I'm oh, not going to make any picture good with this guy ever. Yeah. And so, I was just, obviously, I'm pissed. Hmm. Do you and know so, why he wanted to make you take a picture with him? Because he wants to show yeah. that we're, he's, like, with us and he's supporting us. And I don't know, like, it's all for it's looks. It's all for show. And so, I was trying, wow. like, if you're going to take a picture, I'm going to make it, like, you're not showing this picture to anyone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I, like, mm. make the maddest face, make it look like I obviously don't well, like this Well, and guy. that's another time of him taking advantage of you at an emotional time like you're mm-hmm. literally at your mom's funeral and he's gonna use that to try and show that he's supporting or he's mm-hmm. there or whatever yeah, so so crazy. rather like, than even doing what a good person would do and actually try to be there for him and actually mm-hmm. show that you care I'm sad so i was telling all my other brothers i was like when daniel comes to take a picture just like make an angry face make him not want to show this picture to anyone oh why would you say that to your brothers did they also feel similar to what you did then because of the way daniel handled the whole situation so was, I was it like, this is not okay was it at all like i remember with my siblings when my dad would do things then it was all oftentimes siblings versus parents type of a situation was that the same with your siblings or was it siblings against siblings sometimes it was like 90 percent of the siblings were on the parent side Oh, and you got like 10%. You got like two people that might agree with you. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> interesting. Two of the siblings. Okay. Like literally it was like me and one other sibling that like agreed. Huh. Everyone else is on the parent side. And I'm like, wow. So even seeing all the same things you saw, mm-hmm. they just ignored everything and just mm-hmm. 100% agreed with Daniel? Pretty much. Do you yeah. think it was out of fear though? Or did they just want to agree with him? To be honest, it's it's hard to say because I never asked them about that. But mm-hmm. I think some mm-hmm. of them just agreed, and some of them may be out of fear. But like I was the only one in my whole mom's family, other than Julie who was left before me. Mm-hmm. But I was the only one that was still in the order that was in my mom's family that was publicly saying to what the other siblings and all the other stuff was wrong. I was wow. the only one. That okay. was so. That's so interesting to me. So the siblings, do you think at least in the back of their mind, they thought the same? Because they saw what happened. And so there must have been some part of them that was like, wow, there's an issue here, right? Absolutely. But they just didn't dare do anything about it then? They didn't talk about it, yeah. Wow. Because I guess that can put a target on your own head, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are scared of doing that. Hence why my dad told me to pack my bags pretty mm-hmm. much this is the reason why it's because i came out of like telling like you know my beliefs on the order like some of the things are that are being done are not okay mm-hmm. that's when my dad put his foot down and said okay you can't live here you got to get out of here wow. it's because of this stuff mm-hmm. yeah interesting so it's basically just you saying that <clears throat> daniel made a mistake daniel did something wrong and daniel's like no i didn't and because mm-hmm. you were there and you saw that really happen and you're saying your truthful statement from what you've seen and because he says that's not true, then he has the whole order backing him mm-hmm. up because he's this numbered man with power. Yeah. And so if he says it's one way, then nothing you say, whether it's true or not, mm-hmm. then you can't go against him. He has the power and right. he can he can even kick you out. He mm-hmm. literally can. And so that's obviously a huge motivation why your siblings didn't want to get involved, didn't want right. to say anything about it, right? Yep. I wonder if the fact, because I know a lot of people that escape the order and don't necessarily get kicked out, they don't, it's not as likely as them to be like, oh, maybe I should go back. Do you ever feel mm-hmm. like your desire right. to go back was because of they kicked you out? Could have been a part of it? It definitely contributes to it, but like I was kicked out because I was blatantly saying, not to their face, but to other siblings, mm-hmm. that what's going on is not okay. And I did it many times mm-hmm. to the point where they were like, okay, get out. I think that I honestly, I knew I wouldn't be there for like my whole life, especially when all this stuff happened. I'm like, I will never let this go. I will never mm-hmm. agree with them. I will never do that. I'm never going to be like, yes, I'm going to sign this 10% for him. I'm never going to do that. You know what I mean? Like there were mm-hmm. some things that I decided I'd never do. But so I knew eventually I wouldn't be in the order. But I think just like having all your siblings that you like, be like, okay, you're not my friend anymore is probably the biggest pull. You know what I mean? And your dad, more than I think anyone in the order, uses that family relationship and your sibling mm-hmm. relationship against you, right? Right. And this is, this is one thing that I mean. And Amanda, uh, her saying is question everything. 
And this mm-hmm. is why she's so adamant about it because literally in the order, if you question what they say, even just questioning it, like Joe was a little more blunt about going against his dad, but mm-hmm. even just questioning it, being like, I mm-hmm. don't think that this is right. Like rather than sitting down and wanting to help you find the truth, it's like they totally go against you just for asking questions, which is a human thing to do. And is honestly, in my opinion, a very good thing to do if you want to better understand the life that we're living. So it's like they don't find ways to develop and grow and become just a better person because they want you to be so used to just doing what they say and Mm -hmm. don't question. A lot of people fall for it though. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. He knows and he personally experienced what happened to his mom and to his sister. And when he tries to explain it to people and because it doesn't align with exactly what Daniel says happened, then everyone's calling him a liar. They're all saying that he's wrong and he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he he can't lie to himself. It was he experienced it. He was there. And so to see firsthand how easy it is for these leaders, his own father, to lie about it, and that's just because he can't just put up with that and let that happen, he gets kicked out. Because he wants to share the truth. A shock factor to see you. Did you expect your dad to lie? Or was you like, whoa, my dad, a numbered man, is lying to people? <laughs> was that a shock? Or did you see that coming, basically? No, I knew he, yeah, I knew he told lies. And he wasn't mm-hmm. honest. I mean, he's telling me he saw Jesus, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so, but but like, at one point you know, in your life, you did believe him, right? I mean, we all did. It just depends on how young you are, you know, how young and naive. I feel like we all believe it because we're born into it. But eventually you realize that it was lies, right? So to be honest, like I thought everything. So I didn't have a close relationship with my dad. I didn't know he was my dad till I was like six years old. Okay. And so yeah. I've never had a moment in my life where I'm like, oh, he can tell a lie. However, I had had that moment with my mom. Like I remember my mom like always tell. I can't even remember what it was. Okay. I think when I was like you caught four, her in a lie at one point, four though? or five years oh, old. Okay. Before I even knew who my dad was, I caught mm-hmm. her in a lie. And so at that point, I knew that people just not don't tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's even older people. So I never was like, oh, everything he says is correct. I've never mm-hmm. been like that with my dad. Because by the time I knew who he was, I already understood people don't always tell the truth. That's so interesting. <laughs> so, I feel like I've had a similar experience with my mom. But mm-hmm. I was way younger, probably only like seven or eight, when I caught my mom in a lie. But mm-hmm. I don't think I caught my dad in a lie till I was about 15 or 16 years oh, old. Yeah. And so there was a time period where I was like, oh, my dad's perfect. My dad's wow. like God's right-hand man. Like he can't lie. And then though, I caught him in a lie. And it was blatant because my dad does mm-hmm. this thing where he won't know the situation, but he'll be like, I know that you did this. And he'll, he'll like kind of gamble because maybe there's a good chance that I did it. And sometimes he's right. Sometimes he'll guess I did something and he, he's just guessing, but it's right. I did do it. Like I did sneak out or something. But then there'll be times though where I, I didn't do it. And he'll be like, I know for a fact that you did it. And so he'll okay. punish me for doing it when I never wow. did. And so it was when things like that happened to me that I'd be like, whoa, he... He's lying. He's wrong. Like God's spiritual man is wrong. Like, mm-hmm. like I didn't think that could happen. But you right. see it. And it's so obvious too because he's trying to use those tactics of being like, because sometimes it works for him. Sometimes mm-hmm. he catches me sneaking out or something. And it, and even though he didn't see me do it, but he says he knows I did it. And sometimes I did. So he would catch me. But sometimes he would say I did when I never did. And so mm-hmm. it was like, it was just so obvious that he was just gambling. He was just guessing and just, I guess trying to be right, I guess. But. Yeah. I figured out who my dad was mm-hmm. when I was six years old. And six, I, I remember okay. being disappointed. This huge person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I've never had this huge person <clears throat> until I was like eight. Okay. But I, by then I already knew that they weren't. So mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? By eight wow. years old, I already, like by the time they were telling me how cool they were, I, they already showed me the house, how, how dumb they were. Mm-hmm. And so like, I was already like, oh, like is it, I think it, yeah. your dad makes it harder because mm-hmm. with my dad, I remember, cause it's kind of a, an order tactic for the wives to be like, Oh, your dad has done this mm-hmm. and helped these many people. And done. They talk them up so much. So I remember from ages, like probably five to 15, I remember being like, Whoa, my dad's like Superman, you know, because right. the wives are all yep. told to talk good about him at church. Everyone's supposed to talk good about numbered men and say all these great praises and never talk negative, right? Mm -hmm. So you're always being told only good things. And then Mm -hmm. though, once you're finally old enough to see things and see all the crazy things that they do, that's when you're like, whoa, either these people don't know what they're talking about or I just found out some secrets, you know? (laughs) So it's like, it's really interesting. And 
from what I've been told about your dad, it's even more extreme because I think it was either Andrea or Jessica that said your dad straight up said that he knows that he's evil or something and mm-hmm. he's like okay with that. Did you ever hear him say that? I've never heard him say that. I've always wanted him to. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I, I did call him out. Like I said, I know you lie all the time. I want to put you on a lie detector. <laughs> okay. And what do you say to that? He's just like, let's do it. Really? <laughs> he was willing to do yeah. it. But I mean, until you have him in the chair, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. He's going to say, yeah, let's So he's do just kind of like gambling yeah. it. Kinda. Until, until talk, you have I'll him. Talk. Yeah. Until you have him in the chair and you're talk, act, talking to him. Do you believe that the order is right? I wanted to ask him these tough questions. Oh my God. So yeah. you, it's but probably a good chance there. that he doesn't actually believe in the order you think? Yeah. I really? I think absolutely. Well, he doesn't Whoa. think it's like God's plan. You know what really? I mean? Really? I think it's a good possibility. Maybe with that. I think my dad doesn't really reflect and think like, is the order of the kingdom of God? I think he's just like, it better be. <laughs> if it's not, I am so screwed. So I don't right. think he even lets himself question it. I think right. he's like, this is God's kingdom. And it has to be. Yeah. You know? He put all his chips. <laughs> <laughs> Put all of his chips down and he's just... Cr- but open. but I do wonder if Daniel yeah. has seen so much of what yeah. Paul has done maybe wrong or made mistakes right. on that he's like, this isn't right, but I'm I'm here. So like he, right. he probably could believe not believe in it, but right. still be doing everything oh, he's absolutely. doing. So yeah. that would... Oh, you're right. That would be so nice to mm-hmm. be able to hook him up to lie detector and see. I wish I did it. You really think he would have let you? No. Not. Absolutely not. Yeah, but no way. <laughs> or he, he maybe he would. would have let you try it and then as soon as he's seen the results been like, no, <laughs> I know. trying to destroy the evidence or it, something. It would have been, oh my gosh. It would have literally like, but it's like in my head, it's like the reason I didn't go through with it because in my head, I'm like, you I already, already know. I already know. Right? Yeah. yeah. I already know That's you're true. lying. Like this is just proof for other people, which I should have done. Because mm-hmm. it, proof is really important and uh, like helpful is what it is. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I really admire you standing up for what you believed in. Because so many uh, order members are, are are like what I said before, when they're like, "At least I'm not doing something bad." They'll watch Daniel and some leaders do something horrible and be like, "Well, that's their sin. They're gonna have to answer to God about that." But I'm gonna just do my own thing, mm-hmm. rather than being like, well, "This should be out in the open. Like this is something we should share with people. We should make sure that people have the all the information." when they're deciding like oh should we really trust daniel mm-hmm. and paul and these people uh, right. rather than just try and keep everything a secret and pretend like everything i was gonna say like at the end when i was like getting kicked out partly the reason why i did is because i told like some of the siblings i talked to was on my parents side right mm-hmm. and they're like no you need to do this you need to do this you need to do this and it's like i was just like well daniel can literally shoot me in the head like i'm not gonna not gonna support that i'm not oh. gonna be like i was literally to the point where i was like there's literally nothing you could do to make me follow this like mm-hmm. there's literally you could you can't do anything it's impossible wow. and i think daniel got word of that and was like okay we lost this guy get him out of here okay so that's what <laughs> yeah needed to get rid of you basically yeah there was nothing that could have been done to make me be like yeah what you guys are doing is is good i'm i was going to constantly if you're going to be putting me in this situation i'm going to constantly stand up and say this is crap this is not mm-hmm. good not good yeah. And it's tough too because it's not even like there's there's what we call a lot of order members that are like fence sitters where they're like they would they don't believe in the order but they're mm-hmm. still there out of convenience. But I feel like with Daniel and his kids, he kind of pushes his kids to have yeah. to bear their testimony and right. say that they love the church, otherwise he really gets on them about yeah. it, rather than just letting them be. You know, right. you can't just stick to yourself and just do your own thing. Yep. He gets really on you about it, which is True. wild. Which I mean, maybe it changed. I did hear that it changes once you get married in the order. Mm Because I know some of my older half-siblings that are married just try to avoid as much as they can. And they're still technically in the order, but they just, for the most part, do their own thing. But then Mm -hmm. they'll still come to you and be like, hey, sign your 10% form. Mm -hmm. So as long as, I guess, you're giving them money and don't cause too much of a hassle, sometimes you can get away with just sitting on the fence or whatever. But Daniel's a unique case, though, man. He's (laughs) wild. Stop Joseph from going to see Daniel but we can be here for him and support him and provide security so that he knows whatever happens in that meeting, that he's gonna walk out of there safe. Oh my gosh, I hope so bad that Joe like recorded or have some audio of this meeting with Daniel. Actually, I know. I was so bad you would have recorded the meeting with your dad. Did you? Yeah. Did that even cross your mind at the time or you, were you too stressed to even think about something like that? Well, you guys are about to get on a secret. What, there's a secret about it? <laughs> there's a secret. What? So. Escaping polygamy actually had me mic'd 
with camera. Wait, you filmed the meeting with Daniel? There was a, I had a button button camera. Oh like, my goodness! I had a goodness. dress shirt. What? Why didn't they use that? The what reason happened? why is, is because the legal issues or something. No, like I asked them not to use it. Talking about my experience, mm-hmm. uh, the way I saw it, but recording someone without them knowing and stuff like that, like at the which time, which is legal, by the which way, is legal. but you personally didn't feel good about it. Then? I didn't feel good about it, so I asked them. I said, I just was like, hey. You know, I, I realized that, like, I felt like I betrayed them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if, it doesn't feel like a betray to just talk about your experience. Mm-hmm. But to, like, go behind their back and, like, record them mm-hmm. just made me feel like a way where I was like, oh, I don't feel good about this. So I asked them, hey, is it okay if we just don't use that footage? And they okay. they were like, yeah, that's fine. They huh. didn't even care. They didn't seem to care at all. But, okay. but yeah, I was mic'd up, camera wow. and everything. Oh, Secret. Yeah. They Dang. probably still have That's the footage. That's crazy too, though, because like they completely betrayed you, right. but you still had the respect enough not to go too yeah. far and make them upset. And but did you was any of it because of fear? I would be afraid Daniel would like like be out to get you if that came out or something. No, no, it none of it was out of fear. Huh? It was okay. all out of uh, you know what? Like and like I really don't feel it's bad to talk about your story. This is your mm-hmm. life. Oh yeah. 100%. This is you have the right to talk about your life. You know what I mean? Like. There's mm-hmm. there's no argument there. It's black and white to me. It's like, it's your life. Why can't you talk about your life? Yeah. But it's like, where I start to be like, ah, it's a little bit weird. Is when you record someone without them knowing, mm-hmm. even though you can do it, depending on like yeah. recording mm-hmm. for your safety. And that's so I was glad to have it there just in case something did oh, seriously yeah. go like down. They fucking tied you up or <laughs> you something. I mean? Oh man. So it's like it was good to have it, but at the same time, like I didn't like you know, be forced to stay. Like I was told mm-hmm. what I need to do to stay. And like, and then it was my decision if I want to go through with it. Uh-huh. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just not use the footage. Okay. So we don't get to see the footage, but mm-hmm. let's talk about it a little bit because you were clearly very nervous about it. And Jessica was nervous for you, man. Right. She, I think from what it sounds like, she kind of told you, you shouldn't go meet with Daniel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, just because they can convince you of stuff, but like, mm-hmm. like I know how it is. Like you can't. Yeah. Like at that point, you couldn't convince me of anything. I was at my breaking point. I couldn't get over the, all the stuff that happened. And actually, going and meeting him just confirmed it for me even more. <laughs> so I was okay. just like, so it was kind yeah. of a, a good relief for you then, huh? Right. Okay. Honestly, I think he thought he was getting to me though when I was there, really? because I mean, he was. I did. I was extremely lonely. That was the most lonely mm-hmm. I've ever been in my life at that moment. And huh. so, and he knew it. He could see it in my eyes. Like he could see Whoa. like how lonely i was and he could see like this kid's at his breaking point and so it's like he was like thought he was gonna win and like i said when i talked to daniel i just agree with everything he says so the meeting basically went with you agreeing with everything (laughs) so so you think after the the end of the meeting was he expecting you to pay and just come back to pretty much he was yeah he was pretty much thinking oh i got him okay easy 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 and then in my head i'm like this guy man So he this probably guy. next Sunday was like, where's Joe? Yeah, he's pretty much like, <laughs> what happened? I thought it went so well. It's like, I'm not going to argue with you, bro. Wow. It's like, I already know that it, like, the, I don't even know how long the meeting was. It was already so long. And it's me just saying, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Whoa. The whole meeting. It's just being talked at the whole time. Dang. Argued 0% of the time. And the meeting was over three hours. Wow. <laughs> so what oh are you trying God. to convince me of? And was it Daniel <laughs> talking the whole time? Pretty was much. It? Okay. Wow. Pretty much. Me just sitting there like, yeah, there's just no way I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you're thinking in your head. <laughs> thinking huh? in my but head. Everything you said was like, okay, like, yeah, I agree yeah. and stuff. Interesting. Because yeah, you. I feel like a lot of people say this where it becomes a waste of breath once you yeah. try to convince someone that's mm-hmm. like literally has their whole life dedicated mm-hmm. to this one way of living and they won't ever consider something different because they think that they talk to God every single yep. night. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, no matter what you say, no matter what evidence you can present, they'll be like, oh, but God's said so what i i'm saying you know yeah. so it's like how do you go against someone who's delusional you just can't yeah. so <laughs> you in the episode you mentioned your brothers were there did they have yeah. any part where they just did they not think the meeting was kind of weird or or like are they always just agreeing with your dad as well they're always agreeing with my dad as well and they're like okay. we're getting this guy back yeah <laughs> that's pretty okay. much just the attitude he's coming right back and uh, i'm just like wow. you bet it you guys got it <laughs> in my head i'm just like there's no way so oh, that's so crazy to me, though, that your same biological brothers and similar experiences to you living a very similar life to you, seeing all the same things you're seeing. But they hear this crazy man talking and 
saying he sees Jesus, and mm -hmm. they are just agreeing with it. That seems so strange to me. The you funny know? part is, like, in their view, I'm kind of just agreeing to it, too. Well, I guess you know for what, what I mean? it looks like, huh? So it's like, so so does that make you think though? Then yeah. in, the, in the back of their minds, they're yeah. like, "Wow, this guy is pretty crazy." Yeah, <laughs> right? probably. Because like that's what I'm thinking, but yeah. it's like you don't argue with someone that's crazy. Oh, uh, it you just know, doesn't make sense. That's what's so interesting though, because when you say only a few of your siblings agreed with you, I had that same experience where in family meetings, me and all my siblings would get up and be like. I bear my testimony. This church is the right church. And our dad is a numbered man and a man of God. But then we, when dad's gone, we'd be with the siblings and be like, this is stupid. Like, you oh, you wow. know this is dumb, right? And we, it was like <laughs> yeah. scary because like you don't talk bad about the order. But mm -hmm. when it was just us siblings, we'd be like, you know this is crazy, right? And be like, well, yeah, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> and so we would openly yeah. say that. But we would also be like, but we can't say that. Like, don't ever tell mom and dad. And you, right. So like we would keep each other's secrets and stuff. Right. But it's like we all knew in the back of our minds. We knew this was crazy. And at mm -hmm. least we, my siblings would talk about it. But I hear a lot of order families, they wouldn't even dare to talk about it right. with their siblings because mm -hmm. there would be some kids would use that as a chance to tattletale mm -hmm. and it kind of the parents use that as like almost a reward system if you mm -hmm. go to the parents and tell us on one of your siblings they will give you like brownie points basically mm -hmm. and be like good job you're a man of god or whatever and, and like make you feel really good but at least i feel like with my siblings though we didn't care about no brownie points or whatever. We were just, it was always siblings versus parents. So wow. we had a very different view and it made it so much easier to just be like, okay, this is crazy, but we're in it. So we got to mm. make it work. Or eventually it gave us the courage to be like, okay, now we have a way out so we can get out of this. Mm. And it's also sad because to me, that tells me that a lot of people are there just because they right. don't get to talk about it. They never get to question what they're doing, so they constantly are making decisions based off of what, they, what they've been told to do and say, and then mm -hmm. they don't question it. So they just are constantly in this cycle of repeating the same things they were taught to do, and so they're not consciously making decisions on how they want to live their life. They mm -hmm. just let the blueprint of what is given to them play out their lives and never change it. So right. it's like, I feel like that would be crazy to live a life of never actually making intentional decisions on what you want to do, but <laughs> just going with what you're told. But yeah. a lot of people do that. And the last part on this is like, when I remember when I was 16, it's like, a, that's when the light bulb came in my head. Like, oh, you could just say you agree. Because oh, I remember people like arguing and like doing all this stuff, like argue, 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 argue. And like, and you kind of fall in the trap, argue about this, argue that. And then I was just like, what if you just say you agree? And then don't actually agree. <laughs> they, so. they do make it very difficult to argue with them because just yeah. like that, they will get on you more. They'll make sure mm -hmm. that you don't miss church. They'll do things to make it so much harder for you to fly under the radar. Yeah. But if you just say you agree, then they'll be like, oh, this person's good. We <laughs> yeah. don't need to pay. Pretty we much. don't gotta need to spend any time with them, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. they just leave you alone. 16, that's when it kind of hit. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone has a different age too because I distinctly remember at like 13 or 14, I was still of the belief that everything my dad said was right. And so I remember catching a secret of my sister's that was, you know, something that was supposedly bad, even though it wasn't even bad, but to the religion, it was bad. So I, I caught my sister and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so horrible. So I went to go tell my dad and, and sometimes I would go and tell him, but there was one time when I was like, I'm not going to tell him and I'm just going to keep this secret to myself and see what happens. Right. Wow. And so I remember seeing it play out and like, she didn't get struck by lightning for doing this thing and like nothing crazy happened. So I remember being like, what if my dad's wrong? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, wow. this is crazy. And so it really started making me think about stuff. It was you're waiting for something to happen. Like, I know because huh. you're told when you sin, you're going to like, right. it's gonna, something bad's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. So in my head at this young 13 year old mind, I'm just like, that's not happening. <laughs> like, what's going on? Like something's weird. Cause you'll believe anything at 12, 13. Sorry. One last thing about that. It's really sad that these full grown adults, our own parents right. will use that against their kids. And literally like the fact that they were young and naive, they will use that against us and just manipulate us and get whatever they want out of us. Even though we're just young, innocent kids trying to understand the way this world works. And they're like, they're, they just use that. And it's, it's really messed up. If you think of it from a broad perspective, that's so messed up to use your child's lack of understanding to take advantage of them. Like, how harsh are you going to be? And they're your own kids. Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Daniel himself and a lot of the order leaders will preach that... Your, the order members are chosen people. So mm -hmm. just the fact that they're born in the order is the reason why they, they're like this good person or they're, mm -hmm. they get to be men of God and stuff. 
but then they're so critical about everything you do. And it's not, not in the fact that like, oh, because of your good deeds is what will get you to heaven. Because they already say you're, you're born in the order. So that's supposedly what's supposed to help you get into heaven. But then anything you do, they're so judgmental on it. They'll be so harsh on you. Isn't that so weird that they teach it like that? I mean, I'm thinking like, how in the world can you be like purely off of something you have no control over? Just mm-hmm. the place you're born is what matters and what's going to get you to heaven. Or right. Not. Right. It's like, I think that's why it's so easy for them to be racist because they're like, mm-hmm. oh, God didn't like you, I guess. And also, I do think this is a good thing because now you've noticed, right? They've got gates and mm-hmm. every time there's a church service, they have people standing at the gates mm-hmm. watching a lot more. I think they're getting a little bit paranoid. They're taking precautions, I guess. Yeah, um, that's true. See, just some regular person just trying to visit the church. As, as hard as it'll be, I don't even know if it's possible. I really doubt that they'd even let people. But it's like this kingdom of God, this righteous church that doesn't allow visitors, this is just the craziest concept ever. This all-loving Christ that they worship and they teach about is telling them, they believe, to not let anyone come in. Put up freaking gates, have security guards, don't let everyone, anyone come into the church parking lot even. If you don't know them, because they're not welcome. They aren't chosen to be there. Isn't that so weird? What are your thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. Do you pick, tell me your your thoughts on if a random outsider went to the order church? What do you think would happen? I think if no one knows them, they a lot of people might just think, oh, that's someone in the order. But okay. if anyone does, as it, long as they're white, anyway. Yeah, as long as they're it depends <laughs> what they look like, right? Yeah. Depending mm-hmm. on what they look like, but if they look like an you know, the average Joe, white guy. And they, a little bit Amish, kind of. <laughs> yeah, they could probably get away with it. Uh-huh. But if someone spots them, I think what they would do is tell, like if I go, I, someone would tell my dad. My dad would get word of it and say, how do you want to handle this? Or something like that. And mm-hmm. they would say, get rid of him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I think if uh, someone else, it would probably get to Paul or like some other person. And mm-hmm. then that person would make the decision of what happens. But they for sure, if, if they're spotted, they would for sure be questioned. Okay, but do you think there's a chance that if it's just a random family out there, maybe they even bring their kids, if they go there, uh, so you do think there's a chance that they just let them be a part of the church service and not kick them out? If they don't notice. The only way they're going to not be questioned is if they don't if notice. There's not they enough think, attention brought to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if, so if, if they, they think, can blend in enough, basically, yeah. they might get away with it. But yeah. if they stand out at all, it's likely word will get all the way up to Paul and Paul will decide what happened. And most mm-hmm. likely he would say they got to leave. Right. But maybe, because like a part of me is like, they got to at least to some extent be like, God's probably choosing some people to come join our church, right? So I would think that a little bit people would be like, God sent these people to come to our church, you know, and be converted, you know? So. You don't think so? No, I don't think so because no. Paul, huh. Paul's a lawyer, right? Okay. He's going to be thinking, they're here to destroy us. Oh, you think <laughs> he's always on the defensive then? Yeah, do something. They're here to cause problems. Like, he's, huh. he's, there's a reason they're not trying to bring people in that way. Right. Oh, yeah. If they want to come and to be part of the order, they got to talk to Paul before they ever show up to church. Oh, that's you know true. I mean? Yeah, because the way that the Greens family joined, they had to go through all these meetings mm-hmm. and then they were able to come to the church. Meetings, right. Huh? And, you know, each of them had to pay five thousand dollars to join. That's not you know bad. That? That's it. That's it. Was I'm yours surprised. more? I'm I thought yours well, was, it was 5, about five thousand as okay. well. But I'm like. I'm honestly surprised. Yeah. I thought it would be more. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, man. Oh. Just to join the kingdom of God, you got to have that dough. It's 5000 huh? <laughs> Sounds like a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> to, go, to get into heaven? That's a good deal. <laughs> yeah. I will probably meet with Daniel in one of the small office rooms at the front of the building. But everything in that Look building at, is connected. They have footage so of the no whole property. All the church <laughs> building. I mean, they don't look like churches at all, you guys. They're just right. freaking warehouses. But they have footage of all of it, the whole layout and everything. Do you know of the one person that filmed? Well, the insider, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. There was a person that, like, and then they were kicked out. Like, Jacob, Marshall. Oh, yeah, but that yeah. footage was only posted on Instagram or something, right? I think it was on YouTube for a little while. Yeah, and then they took it down. I yeah. did. I watched that whole video. and it. But the, what was interesting about that, though, is um, I... I didn't like it because they only started it right when they were kicking them out of the church. Uh And then they didn't really ask any questions. It was just constantly them being like, you need to leave. And then being like, 
no, we, we can be here. And they're like, no, you need to leave, you know? <laughs> so it was like, I mean, it was still inter- an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. And that one's different too, though, because they were also an order member. Right. So people knew right away, like, right. who that person was and stuff. But it still is kind of sad to see because that order member was still, like, it was before he even technically left the order. Mm-hmm. And he was getting kicked out of church service as when he still con- was, like, an order member. Right. So. It's very interesting. And it's also super likely that the information that man David had Mm -hmm. was inaccurate. And he was kicking him out because he thought something happened between him and a girl. Mm -hmm. But, and honestly, I don't even know what really happened. But the information is so slim, it's hard to confirm any truth at all. Mm -hmm. So for David to be like that and 100% kick him out when... all he had was speculation and rumors and ideas mm-hmm. of what happened. And he was willing to kick out one of their own members for that. I'm <laughs> always being like, we need to be examples for the world. We need right. to con- like be good enough to convert people. And, mm-hmm. and I thought that I had this priesthood that I, I can like overpower people and like convince them of the truth, you know? Uh, so in my head, I was always like, we should want to welcome people in. It's a church, but mm, that's no. not how it's acts. That's not the reality. But I do think in the teachings, they do make it sound that way. But then the reality is not, it's not the same. There's no reason to rush to any decisions. If you don't want to go back right away, take some time. You don't have to do it on Dino's timetable. That's one thing that I love, though, because order members are always like, oh, Jessica and Andrea, they're mm-hmm. going to want you to leave no matter what and do anything to keep you away from the order. But right. it's like, they say straight up, if you want to go back, do it. We're right. never going to be like the order and force someone or oh, try and sure. manipulate someone into, into leaving. But it's like, we're also going to give our two cents and present mm-hmm. evidence on both sides right. because that's the way it should be, especially if you truly believe you're the kingdom of God and you have God's evidence of truth, mm-hmm. you should be willing to share both sides and let people choose. Not feel like, oh, I have to drag this person to heaven because right. they're not going to choose the truth. It's like, what? That means you right. don't even have faith in your own truth. I was thinking, like, when all this happened, I was like, this is going to be the worst moment, time of my entire life. I'm at the lowest. The meeting low. was going to be? Or no, was like, just after... Like my mom passed and everything, then like I was like, this is gonna be the worst time in my life. Like it's only uphill from here. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was kind of can't possibly get worse than this. Wow, I was right. <laughs> it was that was the worst moment of my life. Dang, it, it nothing else compares. Um, that was definitely the worst moment of my life. So huh. I've had some tough things, but like it doesn't compare. Yeah. I love when people share that because there are still people to this day that'll message me and be like. I know the truth, Eskel. I know you wish you could come back to the order. I know you hate your life out there. And it's like, we publicly say all the time, like, like, but we're also honest about it that it's like, it's not all sunshine and rainbows out here. Mm-hmm. The life in general is difficult. You run into mm-hmm. hard things, but it does not compare to having your own father who's supposed to love you, try and mm-hmm. manipulate you and make you feel like absolute trash. It's like, mm-hmm. it doesn't get much worse than that, you guys. Mm-hmm. It's like, the, the worst experiences you have in the order are so much worse than the worst mm-hmm. days we have out here. So oh, it's yeah. like, it's true. We still have hard days out here and it's uh, that's going to be life. That's always going to happen. Mm-hmm. But there, I would be honest if I felt like, oh, I... I am missing out on stuff because I tell people all the time, I miss the fact that I felt like I had a thousand friends in the order, you know, because mm-hmm. everyone's your cousin. They a little bit feel obligated to be your friend because you're all in the right. same church, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's really easy to just go to people's homes and hang out. And so it's like that aspect, the social aspect, I do miss, but I don't miss that it comes with the fact that they will totally go against you just by something they hear uh, about you. So Mm -hmm. it's not even a true friendship at that point either. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it is more satisfying on the outside where I will meet people out here and it takes time to build a relationship and become friends, but then they won't just... To like backstab you or just completely disown you because you have a different belief than them. I feel like it's so much mm-hmm. more worthwhile and meaningful when you build that relationship and have a true friend. So it's yeah. definitely a different experience for sure. Wow. So, but that was my biggest thought back then. It was mm-hmm. this is the worst it's ever going to be. Just keep yeah. your head up. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's a big right. part why because 
all those great social aspects you get of the order and having so many friends and cousins, they use that as a mm. tactic to take away from you. So it's mm -hmm. like if you put too much importance on having all of those social uh, events and social opportunities, then they you really do let them use that to scare you into staying or scare you into asking questions and learning your own truth and understanding what you mm. want to know. So it's like... Is that worth it? I think that's very much up for debate and mm -hmm. other people will have different opinions and I think right. that's okay for people to think differently about it, mm -hmm. but we can also have our own opinions. I think it's funny and it's the worst when someone speaks for me because I would never yeah. say, I, I would not want to speak for someone and say like, you, this per individual doesn't think this way about this thing when it's like, I'm me. I would know if I want to go back to the order or not. Right. I would know if I yeah. enjoy being out here. It's like, you can't tell me how I feel just because you're like a relative of mine. You know? right. It's so funny how they're so confident in doing that. But <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's his children and they will things in front of them to try and break them down and control them. Yep. I'm hoping Josie's right for it. And he did. I did, yeah. <laughs> But it, it's still tempting. Oh, I love this part. Oh, yeah. Um, mom would want me to do what's right. <clears throat> if you see something happening that shouldn't be happening, you should do what you can to stop it. Mm, that's so emotional, man. Shoot, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was. <laughs> mm hmm That's it. Let's think. Any last things to recap it? That was a that was that's, tense episode. Dude. I know it's tough. It's tough to film stuff like that because it's like it's hard to revisit this stuff. But I mm -hmm. think it's helpful at the same time. It's helpful to get the word out. It's helpful. To, like again, if you feel like like you want to stand up for the truth, right? But it's tough to definitely do it. But I think it's. Hopefully people are still watching this video. If you are, like, seriously, thank you. We, yeah, thanks for making it to this far in. Yeah, so. we appreciate y'all more than we can even say. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to spread light on this, these type of things. And we're just trying to let people know that there are other options out there. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of cults, their entire system that they have is to try and make people feel like they don't have options, make mm -hmm. them feel like they're in this little box and that they have to stay in this box. But the reality is there's so many choices and there's... Even as far as if you experience leaving or trying something new and going back, like mm -hmm. that is an option. And it's like they try mm -hmm. to make it seem so much like life is black and white and you mm -hmm. have to live a life a certain way. But it's just there's so much more to it. And there's a lot of joy and great experiences in life that mm -hmm. I just feel like it's worth branching out, trying new things and yep. figuring out for yourself what you want to believe in. Either one of us, I can guarantee you if either one of us wanted to, we could go back. I really believe it. I, b I believe for sure that so we could. It would be hard. It would but. suck. <laughs> it would suck, and it's not a smart thing to do. It. But we could do it. <laughs> if we wanted to do it, I'm pretty sure we could do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like like you said, like you do want to explore different things. Try it and then go back. Honestly, I, I'm pretty sure. Look, I know for sure I can go back if I wanted to. I don't, and I will never do it.
Mm-hmm. But if I wanted to, I could. Mm-hmm. It's always open, but it's like, cut my arms and legs off. I'm probably good. I'm good. I'll keep them. Mm-hmm. I'll keep them for now. Well, and not <laughs> even that, though, but the way that the group is ran and it's so focused on your reputation that right. even if we did everything that they asked and went back, we would still be shunned. And mm-hmm. it's like we would never get back that social aspect of it's being true. a part of this big family and, and feeling like right. we're all going to heaven together. Because it's that's even true. though that's what they teach, we're all God's family and we're all loving each other. Everyone that's experienced it knows that's not true. There's no Mm -hmm. way. It's so crazy. And there's so much that goes into your actual reputation and the way that people treat you that Mm -hmm. it's just, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's really not. And anyone that's willing to actually look at the facts and the reality will see that. And it's still, it's not saying that that that's evidence. It's not God's church, but it's at least evidence to me that it's worth asking questions because if they're willing to lie to you about that, there's other things that I'm sure they'd be willing to lie to you about. I feel I feel more comfortable asking questions and figuring out for myself. Sweet. Well, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Uh, one last little shout out about the event that's going on. If any of you guys want to come see Joe and I in person, and my sister Amanda is going to be there, and there'll be a lot of people there. Um, I, I want to hype up the event as much as possible, but I also want to like make it known that it's going to be in Salt Lake City. It's going to be close to the order area. So true. like, it's going to be interesting, an interesting mix of people. We'll, true. we'll just say right. that. So That's very true. Uh, and I think this is something huge. Any order members are welcome. And we're not going to mm-hmm. kick you out. We're Absolutely. not going to be like the order and be like, no, you can't come. Or like, I don't know. It's just, so it's going to be interesting. And we, of course, though, there is a, like, People have to be respectful. There's going to be security. It's still going to be a safe environment. Mm -hmm. But we, I think it's important to make it known that it's like, we're not going to be biased. Like the order is we welcome Mm -hmm. everyone, anyone who's willing to come and have a good time and enjoy it. You're welcome to come. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but and please do. Yeah. If you don't come, you're going to miss out. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Why do you want people to come to the event? Let's start there. The reason why is because I left the order because of magic. Magic has been a huge passion of mine for since I was 13. I've been so focused on work and other things like I haven't been able to do as much magic. Mm -hmm. And I've been losing like last year. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what's the next move for me? I started to lose more purpose. You know what I mean? I was Mm -hmm. so focused on work and all these other things. And so to bring back purpose for me and also just to yeah share share my and love i feel like what's so cool for me is i feel like i gotta watch your dreams come true you know mm-hmm. you you have a goal out there you have these hobbies things that you love doing and mm-hmm. you have every resource and capability to do that in this life true. so why not you mm-hmm. know you're gonna exactly. do it and you're gonna put your best foot forward so that's right that's so exciting i think that's gonna be awesome thanks sweet well thank you so much joe and thanks everyone for watching i hope to see you at the event uh on june 8th right yes june 8th on a saturday so that's right see you there you guys have a good one the link's down below appreciate it Bye, thanks guys, guys.